I find myself. Then unexpectedly, the clouds parted. At that exact moment, uh, my phone rings, and it is Mike Reese and Al Jean. And they're guys that used to be on The Lampoon, and now they're running The Simpsons, and they said, we've just had our first writer's spot open up on The Simpsons, which was the show. This is, the Simpsons had only been on the air for about three seasons at that point. And they said, do you have anything you could show us? Do you have any sketches or anything you could show us? Because we might, we, you know, we hear, I had a good reputation, and they, and we hear you might be the guy, so I sent some sketches over, and they called me back the next day and said, this, this looks good. Can you be out here in three days? I was scared, because I'd never written, Simpsons episodes are very different from sketches. I'd only written sketches at that point, and I'd never written that form before, and they come in and they say, you've got to write these three-act half hours, but I learned how to do it. I'm a college man. I won't need my high school diploma anymore. I am too smart. This was one of the first episodes that Conan wrote. I am too smart. S-M-R-T. I mean, S-M-A-R-T. Homer's really fun to write for. James L. Brooks was always getting mad because we weren't coming up with Marge stories. Yeah, because so, Marge is just like your mother. Yeah, and we didn't want to do that. Well, I think we should spend the money on something the whole town can be proud of. Like a giant billboard that says no fat chicks? No. Mr. Burns was my favorite character to write for because there are no limits for Mr. Burns. You're in big trouble, Burns. Homer Simpson's job requires college training in nuclear physics. Now, you get your man up to speed, or we'll be forced to take legal action. Is that so? Well, I have the feeling you'll be dropping the charges. Ooh, Ooh the painter's moved your desk, sir. Oh, yes. Mr. Burns is so much fun because he has unlimited wealth. <laughs> And so anything can happen in his house. And you think about it. If Mr. Burns is at home, he can go into his basement, he can have a robot, he can have a hyperbaric chamber. And then combine that with the fact that he has almost limitless capacity for evil. You add those things all together and it's so much fun to write. And I always just wanted to write for Mr. Burns. Just, you just think about it. Eh, Simpson, eh? Yes, it was just, it all came naturally. Simpson, eh? Excellent. I, uh, Sim Mr. Burns' lines would just tumble out of my mouth all the time. And when you write for Burns, do you have to write for Smithers as well? Yes, you'd write Smithers. Hello, my name is Mr. Snrub, and I come from uh, someplace far away. Yes, that will do. Anyway, I, I say we invest that money back in the nuclear plant. I like the way Snrub thinks. One, of the, one episode I wrote um, began with... Uh, uh, the plant almost going into a meltdown. Homer hits the wrong switch. Oh, 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 oh. No, this can't be happening! Mr. Burns rushes to his escape pod, which he has, and the door opens. And there are two seats there, and Mr. Burns gets in one, and he starts to close the door, and Smithers comes running and wants to get in, and Mr. Burns won't let him get in. For the love of God, sir, there are two seats. And Burns says, I like to put my feet up. <laughs> I like to put my feet up. I, I had the uh, escape pod just get shot out the door, roll down the street, and bang into a tree. <laughs> It was just really, it's really fun to write mean. And you can, it, you know, he has this limitless capacity for cruelty burns, which is fun. Out of the blue, Conan was approached by Lorne Michaels, his former producer on Saturday Night Live. Michaels invited him to replace David Letterman on NBC's late night show. His appointment shocked the industry. NBC were taking a huge risk and Conan's future looked uncertain. My contract was being renewed by an egg timer. They would, they would, every 15 minutes, they would renew my contract. It was tough going, but what are you gonna do? I had to do my job And what day. was your relationship like with the uh, people who were in charge? Did they talk to you much? Did they? They looked past me. There was a while there where I was, you know, I think they were thinking of getting rid of me. You know, let's get rid of this guy. It's Did not they trick out. with the money? Did they do the, you know, Conan, you're really only there just because we can't find anybody else. So I was paid in $20. I was, I was paid in German marks. It's values. not a bad currency. Well, this is, they, they set the level after World War I when it collapsed. So uh, it took me, I was getting paid 50,000 marks a show, but that could only buy a stick of bubble gum. 
So yeah, they played all kinds of shenanigans with me. But you know what? I just kept thinking, if I make this thing work, it's all going to come out in the wash. So can you remember when that happened? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But you're not going to tell me. I'll tell you what. I'll okay. tell you anything. <laughs> yes, 1993, a very difficult time, uh, hanging on by a thread, getting renewed every, literally, I think every three months. Oh. I was on three-month contracts. Oh, no, that's not good. That no. should be illegal. It should be. They did a lot of things. I had to work uh, at a sneaker factory when I was five. That should be illegal, and I think it is. The point is, tough times. Uh, but you, everyone does what they have to do to get by. You just do what you have to do. You just keep, you know, do your show every day. That's what saved me, and that should be the point of this story. Yeah. The thing that saves me again and again and again is you can worry, you can panic, but every day there's a show to do. And when you have to go and do a show and there's an audience there, you put all that out of your head, you go out there, you drop your pants, you do what you have to do to get your laughs, and if the show's good, that saves your sanity. Because you think, well, that, and that's what saved me that first year, is I kept thinking, these shows get better every night. I'm going out in front of these crowds, and we had very young crowds, and they're laughing. Something's working. Here we go, here we go! By the third season, Conan had established his own distinctive style as host of the show. Late Night's a great place. It was, a great, it was the right show for me at that time. I had a lot to learn. I didn't know what I could and couldn't do. And the Late Night show is very much a laboratory. You try things. You do all your training, you try all your madness and craziness on the late night show, and then when you have a better sense of who you are, it's really nice to get a chance anyway to do The Tonight Show. The Tonight Show is a bit like our own Late Late. In fact, the Late Late is said to have been modeled on it. For 30 years, the show was hosted by Johnny Carson, and it almost became part of the American landscape. When Carson finally called it quits, he was replaced by Jay Leno, a well-known stand-up comic. Then five years ago, NBC announced the host in waiting, the Dauphin, so to speak, was Conan. Could you have said no to this? Um, I tried many times uh, to get out of this, um, but uh, they ran so many tests and they all kept coming back, you're the best man to do it, and I finally had to give in. Uh, no, I, I, to be honest, I really couldn't. You know, it's The Tonight Show. As the new host of The Tonight Show, Conan is under intense scrutiny from the US media and from NBC itself. This show is of strategic importance to the network and its viewing figures are analyzed in forensic detail. So far, the results are deemed to justify its huge resources. The resources when you host The Tonight Show are incredible. We blew up a car two weeks ago. It was, a week, no, it was just a week ago. And we packed it with 20 pounds of explosives and we, we had a helicopter shooting the whole thing and we blew it up. We fired women out of giant air cannons uh, and they went 60 feet in the air, against their will, by the way. There are all kinds of things we can do now and so you, I feel a little bit like a kid in a candy shop. He may be under pressure to deliver, but there is at least one hour of the day when Conan feels he can really enjoy himself. Whatever else happens in my day, the hour that I'm doing the show is usually the best hour of my day. I really love being in front of an audience, and so I'm a worrier. I'll worry about the show beforehand. I'll worry about the show afterwards. Trust me, you have times when you think, oh my God, you know, this is tough, this is hard. But it always comes back to, this is a great way to make a living. I'm not just a one-line wonder. These days, Conan O'Brien is only likely to return to The Simpsons as a guest performer. I didn't do it. <laughs> Great material. We'll be right back. Sit perfectly still. Only I may dance.